Hello Internet. My name is Mysalim Namonor. I am a satellite system engineer by trade. And I try to keep myself updated and informed of the industry news and also what's going on in the academia. So whenever I find something interesting, I take a note of it. At the end of the month, I turn on my phone, turn on, uh, open the sound recorder app and just narrate my notes, hoping that someday it might be useful. Also, these notes, I upload them in the internet so that someday, somewhere, someone might find them useful. So right now it's 1754 hours and it's Sunday, October 25th, 2020. Unfortunately, I'm a little bit behind. So these are the notes for September. So what are the important news that I found interesting in September? The first one is the Chinese rocket crash. It's not really a crash. First of all, when I saw this news on Twitter, I thought, okay, something has gone wrong and it has crashed and it's bad news. Turns out it's not so. The launch itself was successful. So the Chinese Long March 4B first stage uh, Long March 4B rocket was launching a satellite known as Gaofen 11. It's an Earth observing satellite, and it the all of the uh, probably probably the launch was successful, but the first stage booster of that uh, Long March 4B rocket felt uncontrollably near a village and it almost it almost hit a school so that i i could not find any official news sources from china so i'm i'm not exactly sure of it but what the videos popped up on twitter and from other new other sources it doesn't look quite good at the first glance it seems like the things are crashing things are literally falling out of the sky the thing is the first stage boosters are discarded and often it would be the case that the discarded first booster will fall into the sea or in some places where it is not habited by people. The people who are in charge of launching this rocket make sure that the first stage booster does not fall on a crowded place, does not fall on a, on a place where there are humans. So it will be either disposed on the sea or somewhere in a land where it is not habited. That's why you'd see that in nearly all of the spaceports, whatever the satellites are being launched from, east of it, the east of the launch launch pad will always be sea or some 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 lands which are not habitated. So if anything goes wrong, if anything goes south, things will would fall. In, it will not damage any people. That's the main thing. But in this case, it did not happen. So unfortunately, the booster was using hydrogen and nitrogen tetroxide as a fuel now these fuels are really really toxic and even when handling them you you need to have a special suit prepared something like those movies you know you, you cover yourself from head to toe and make sure that you don't breathe hydrogen and you do not and hydrogen doesn't touch your skin so it is very toxic and it is for this reason that hydrazin is slowly phased out as a rocket fuel is this people do, do not want to use this fuel it's very risky and it's very costly to maintain unfortunately this first stage booster still has some left and i i hope the people in that village did not inhale in large quantity it would be bad The second news does not quite involve a satellite directly, rather a company you might be well aware of. It's Amazon, uh, more specifically Amazon Web Service and Microsoft Azure Cloud. Now, when I first read this news, I was under the impression that Azure is the only company who is targeting the space sector and who have a dedicated team just to make sure that these satellite operators use their service. But as I was fact checking, it turns out Microsoft also has a dedicated team for the same target customers. So what would happen is that uh, any Earth observing satellites would take a large amount of data, right? a large amount of images, whether it's, it's visual image or on any other spectrographic image. Now, this images needs to be stored and processed. You would need to store the raw data. You need to get them processed and you also need to store the process data. 
and also the customers might have different uh, specification of how re how really they want the data to see so you need storage and you need processing power so the cloud looks like a very viable solution it looks like a very interesting solution furthermore if you have multiple ground stations scattered around the globe a cloud will be a perfect way to synchronize your operation so I thought, okay, AWS is 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 aware of the situation and acting uh, targeting the uh, target customer base. But it turns out it's just not there. Microsoft also has has acknowledged that okay, this is a very large group of customers. So it just gives you an idea that how big the market is. You wouldn't really dedicate a whole a part of your sales team just for a specific industry, the space industry. Unless you're confident that this business will bring a lot amount of revenue to your company, you you would normally do that. So I guess it's one of, uh, I mean, it's a, another indication that the new space industry is really going to bloom in the future and the market will expand quite a lot. So it it's both assuring for me that yeah okay perhaps i picked the right, uh, right field to work on and also a little scary because the more data you have you the more concern you have for data privacy and all those related things which time to time bothers me number three a russian company plans to serve you ads which are out of this world literally they they want to send a satellite which we, think of it as a projector morphed with satellite and the projector pro projector will display images on the dark sky so the reach you have is more than global this really gets under my skin i mean nah <laughs> So they are calling it the space banner system. I don't. I have no idea how they would pull it off or how they try to display it. But my basic idea is that even if this project is successful, I do not want it to display ad in a dark night sky. I mean, whenever I'm trying to take a break and and uh, you know just want some alone time, I would rather go outside and look at the dark sky maybe some stars on the moons in the process but hell if there is an ad now in this in the sky i i think i, I would just lose it man that there are enough ad, ads already there are ads on my news site there are ads on my social media and whatnot so please no man get just just no more ads no no this not the space banner stuff so usually i would hope that a company would succeed in their business model but for this particular one nope man sorry I'm, I'm i'm not on your team this time elon musk is really pushing the schedule for the bfr or the starship so they have multiple prototypes and this month the sn6 prototype has hopped and the sn7.1 has popped so one of them hopped and one of them popped so the hop test was probably to see if this control system was actually working and the pop test would be that the integrity test or, or the structural integrity of the of the rocket so interesting to see uh probably not so much for to take a note so i'll not go into details of it and of course they have launched 60 more starling satellites on september 3rd this brings the total number to, I don't know, man, more than enough. So that was basically what the news as I come across for September and what I felt was interesting to take a note of. And as always, dude, I'm not a reporter. I'm not a journalist. So what I do, I go through these news sites, find whatever is interesting, take a note, save the link. And if you want the link yourself and if you want to read in the details, please check my blog sites and my web pages. It, it will be there. So, yeah. Thanks for listening. It was a very 
short month in terms of interesting news and the other ones did not really cut the requirement so to say thanks for listening